Morning guys, it's Chris with Nichols Retirement Empire. This morning, I'm going to finish up my series about the top 10 things that kids do when they get in trouble or if they get confronted with something, uh, if they've been caught, you know, doing something. Uh, the top 10 things that you're gonna see them do, this is for your information so that you know what's going on as a parent or a teacher. Um, so let's finish that up today. You got the disclaimer. Um, I'm just giving you information that I have amassed over 29 years in education and raising kids myself. I'm just giving you the behaviors that I have seen happen. Again, not determining whether a kid is guilty or innocent, not determining whether a kid is doing something good or bad. I'm just telling you what you're going to see so that you're not surprised. And if you see something that strikes a bell with you and you think, wait a minute, I've been doing that. Or, wait a minute, my kid's been doing that. Don't get mad at me. I'm just giving you some information. You do with the information what you want, but don't blame it on me because I saw it and told you about it. All right, so far we have had three. The three we have had are, number one is admit it, okay? They may get caught, confronted, and they admit it. Number two, they may deny it. They may get caught, they're in some trouble, they deny it. And number three was what I called de-admit, which is a combination of denying and admitting. So that's the three we've covered so far. All right, today, the fourth one. And this one is a heavy duty one that if the kid is smart enough to use, really works, really works. This one I call wait for the parent. And to me, this is the most sophisticated of all these, wait for the parent. What does that mean, wait for the parent? Well, something happened. Let's say the kid uh, made a bad grade, okay, at school. So they're in trouble. You know, they're getting confronted by the parent for being, for having made a bad grade. And uh, what the kid does is the kid doesn't do anything. He just waits. And the parent, you know, kind of tries to find out what's, what's going on. Why is this? What, what? So eventually what the parent is going to do, is they're going to start offering reasons why they think this might have happened. So they're going to throw stuff out there and see what sticks. And pretty soon they're going to throw something out there. Uh, let's say, for example, um, is it that teacher? Yeah, I knew that teacher. Was. And the kid hears that parent say something. Yeah, I knew that teacher wasn't a good teacher. And the kid hears that and he goes, that's it. That's it. It's the teacher's fault. I'm going to tell mama it's the teacher's fault because she don't like that teacher anyway. She didn't like him from the time she came in there and saw him at, at open house. And so now... And now the kid throws that excuse out there and the parent latches on to that and that works. And they'll do that with anything. They'll just wait and hear what the parent, you know, uh, why don't you want to ride the bus? Why don't you want to go to school? Why don't, why don't, you know, are you getting bullied? Yeah, I'm getting bullied. Latch on to that. Okay. They know whatever the parent throws out there sooner or later, those are the excuses they think the parent wants to hear. So they repeat it back to them. And it works, and it works every time. Uh, I can't tell you how many times as an administrator I investigated things uh, that kids told their parents that happened on the bus or happened at school or whatever that didn't happen at all. Uh, and and they, but that was the excuse. And until as long as that worked, the kid kept doing it. Okay, so listen to the parent, hear what the parent says. You know, is your brother picking on you? Is that why you? Is that why you don't? Want to come out of your room? You know, yeah, my brother's picking on me. You know, they'll just repeat back to the parent what they say, okay? Number four. Number five. Number five is blame. Blame. Uh, blame the other kid, you know. Well, it wasn't me. The other kid start. you know, or they started it, and then all I did was say something about, you know, blame them. It's, it's the other kid's fault. It's the teacher's fault. You know, well, the teacher didn't tell us what to do. So I was asking uh, the kid behind me the directions, and I got in trouble for talking. Blame the teacher, you know, blame them, blame um, the parent, you know. Well, my mom uh, told me that it's, uh, you know, blame the parent, blame the school, blame society, blame her. Here's, here's a good one, uh, the conspiracy, the conspiracy. Uh, every, you know, well, who, who, who's giving you, everybody, everybody in that classroom, you know, all the other kids are lying about me, you know, they're all uh, getting together and they're all, you know, and sometimes that happens, you know, there are cases where that happens. But, you know, 90% of the time, no, there, there's not a conspiracy out against you, that kind of thing. And they're apparent, and I, I've chased these conspiracies down and stuff like this. And um, But, you know, that's another one. Blame, number five. Uh, number six, and this is a tough one for parents especially. 
and it's tough for any adult. Six is what I call victimized. Victimized is where, you know, I'm being confronted with something, I've done something wrong, whatever, and I turn myself into a victim. Um, usually it's, a, it's you know, there's going to be tears along with it. Well, I'm just, you know, some kids do it on purpose, and some kids, they really are, a, you know, a victim, but uh, I'm just so stupid, I can't get anything right. And no matter what, how I try, you know, no, 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 son, you're not stupid. You know, then they, you become the victim, so it becomes about trying to make you feel better. Um, you know, that kind of thing, instead of dealing with whatever they did wrong. Um, you know, the, um, you know, well, well, everybody hates me, and I don't have any friends, and I don't, ha you know, then it becomes about, well, no, everybody doesn't hate you. You know, and you can have friends, you know, and then you get into that, you know, and it's hard to ignore that. I mean, and you don't necessarily need to ignore that, but that's part of it. Um, the, this, this, to fall apart, totally fall apart, you know, and then it becomes about, are you okay? Uh, you know, and they're crying and it's not, you know, and all this kind of stuff and that's happening. You know, it's just a total collapse and fall apart thing. That one's making yourself into a victim. So that's, uh, that's number six, victimize. Number seven, deflect, deflect. Um, this is, you know, a lot of kids use this, uh, um, and a lot of adults use this. It's like, well, well you know, you, you did this. And so now, you know, listen, I'm going to make you clean your room. I'm going to, you know, there's some kind of consequence in the kids. Well, well, uh, my friend the other day, he did this. It's way worse. Or, well, uh, my sister, she doesn't clean her room at all. Or, um, well, I made a good grade yesterday, you know. Or, mom, I love you. You, you look real pretty today. Uh, anything to deflect. <laughs> you know, to deflect away from what happened. Um, that's that's one thing that they will do. Um, number eight, number eight, remorse. Now this is again uh, when you want them to have, you want them to be remorseful. Uh, but remorse is, is a way is a reaction. Now you have the real remorse, like I really am sorry I did this. I I, I shouldn't have done this. I don't know why I did. It. You know that kind of thing. Then you have the fake remorse, where if I act like I'm really sorry, um, and I and I explain why I did it and what I learned from it, stuff like that, then I won't have a consequence. Uh, so that's the fake remorse. And then you have the one, the person that's like, well, I'll make it right. Like they they want to, you know, make up for what they did wrong. So that's remorseful. Uh, so that's number eight, remorse. Number nine. Now you may not see this one, uh, but I have seen this one. And uh, this one is this one I called attack. Uh, attack number nine. Attack is where the kid comes out or the student or the child comes out aggressively, and you know, it, you know they did something wrong. You're explaining what they did wrong, you know that kind of thing. And then it's just, well, this wouldn't happen, and they just go crazy. You know, this wouldn't happen if 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 you had to make me go to school. You knew I was in a bad mood this morning. You knew I was, and then I went to school and I got in trouble. It's your fault. You took. You know, they they get really aggressive and it's really uh, over the top. You know, uh, you know everybody has to. I don't know. You know, it's just you go immediately on the attack and get the other person on the defensive. So now you're not focusing anymore on what they did wrong. You're focusing on whoa, whoa. You need to calm down. You know, so that's the attack. Um, number nine. Number 10, uh, this one I call confusion. Uh, ignorance of the law is kind of the adult version of this. Uh, confusion is where when you did something and you're getting confronted with it, you go, I didn't even know. I didn't know that was wrong. I didn't know I wasn't supposed to do that. I, didn't, I had no earthly idea. Uh, I, I just, I didn't know what was supposed to talk while the teacher was talking in class. I didn't, I didn't know, uh, you know, that I wasn't th supposed to throw a rock through the window. Is that wrong? I didn't, you know, they, it's total confusion. You know, I don't know. Ignorance of the law. Uh, so that's, no, that's 10. Okay. So that's your top 10. You have admit it, deny, three, de-admit, which is the combination, four, wait for parent, uh, five, blame, six, victimize, seven, deflect, eight, remorse, Nine, attack. Ten, confusion. Now, I'm going to give you a bonus one. I'm going to give you a bonus one. Um, this one I call nothing. Plead the fifth, nothing. Well, how can they just do nothing? The ones that do nothing know that it doesn't matter whether what they do, their parents aren't going to believe it anyway. 
<laughs> all I got to do is to look at mom and go, you know, no, he didn't do that. He didn't do that. You know, we got him on video. I don't care. He didn't do it. My son didn't do that. My daughter did not do that. They did not do what you said. My, my kids don't do stuff wrong. You know, my kids don't, uh, you know, I've had people tell me my daughter don't lie. You know, my daughter does, you know, and I'm like, well, have you ever told a lie? People lie. I mean, that's, you know, people do things wrong. I mean, it's not that big a deal. I'm not putting her in jail, but I'm just saying she didn't tell the truth. You know, so people, those kids can pretty much do anything because the parents aren't going to believe they did it. They just got it made. You know, they don't even have to offer any kind of excuse. So that's the bonus. That's number 11. Now, again, don't get mad at me because I reveal these to you. Um, there are strategies for being able to spot them and knowing what, how to deal with them and things like that. Um, but, uh, again, these are the activities. These are the things you're going to see happen. And you have to figure out whether they're genuine or whether the kid's just trying to get by, uh, whatever that's up for, to you to do. So good luck with that. Uh, you guys have a good day. If you didn't watch my first video, go back and watch that first one because you need to see those first three. And uh, Nichols Retirement Empire, don't forget to subscribe. You guys have a good day.